welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp, and I'm the executive editor of Data Diversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current 2014 installment of the monthly Data Diversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance, with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will be discussing big data governance, what it is, and why is it necessary. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Bob Steiner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter, tdan.com. Bob has been the recipient of the DEMA Professional Award for Significant and Demonstrable Contributions to the Data Management Industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to Bob to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much, Shannon. Thank you, everybody, for taking time to attend this webinar. Um, no matter what time it is, I was going to say good afternoon to everybody, but for some of you, it's still the morning. In fact, some of you, it's the morning tomorrow. I had somebody from Australia who wanted to attend the webinar and told me they were sorry they couldn't make it and it would be on at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, you know, if you register for the webinar, you get a follow-up email and you can attend the webinar at a time of your choosing. So, again, thank you very much for attending today and thank you very much for attending throughout the year. As Shannon said, this webinar is on big data governance, what it is and why it's necessary or what is it and why it is necessary. And I hope I can answer some of your questions about data governance and and big data and the relationship between the two in the next hour's time. And as I said, we're going to leave some time at the end of the webinar if you have some questions. I wanted to share with you also, uh, I announced this in the webinar last month, that we started the series or we started to put together the subjects for the series for 2015. The subjects for January, February, and March in front of you, we'll be doing Agile and Data Governance, Bridging the Gap Between the Two in January. In February, Data Governance Roles and Responsibilities. And in March, we'll be talking about Data Governance Best Practices and what are the criteria to identify what would be a Data Governance Best Practice for your organization. So a couple other things to share with you real quickly, as I typically do. I want to let you know that the book on non-invasive data governance, which Shannon had mentioned, is now available. It was available September 1st uh, through Techniques Publishing. On You can get that book in Kindle format or on Amazon.com. Also, the KIK Consulting website, if you're, more, if you're interested in more information about non-invasive data governance, is, uh, is now has been updated and changed. Also, one more thing to share with you is that the Enterprise Data World event, the agenda for that event has now been posted, and I'm happy to say that I will be speaking at that event. I'll be speaking on progressive topics in data governance. I'm going to talk about big data, like I'm talking about today. I'm going to talk about agile, and also going to talk about the Internet of Things and how that relates to management and data governance. So I hope you can attend in Washington, D.C. It's a fabulous con uh, conference every year. Uh, you will be able to attend in uh, the end of March and the beginning of April. This is the abstract for the webinar. I always start my webinars with the abstract. Big data is all the rage. Everybody's t asking about big data, researching big data, considering even some companies are doing big data. Your company may be one of those. And it's kind of funny when I talk to people about what I do, I talk about data governance. And a lot of them have always said, well, you're talking about information security, right? And I said, well, you know, that's, uh, that's a part of it. What's funny now is when people uh, talk to people about data governance, they say, well, is it related to big data? Because they keep hearing all these things about big data. Well, big data is in the news. There's a lot being said about big data. In this webinar, I want to talk to you a little bit about defining what big data is because there's different definitions uh, depending on uh, who you ask in the, in the industry. Um, also, I want to talk to you about data governance and different definitions for governance and how do we relate the two. Is there such a thing as big data governance or are we really just talking about the governance of big data? So um, that is what we'll be talking about today. This session is going to include defining big data governance, ways to govern big data, making that connection for the IT people and for the business people in our organization between 
the data efforts that are taking place and the need to govern the data associated with those efforts. Also determine the vitality of big data governance and also I will offer to you some other considerations for big data governance and the governing of big data. Um, real quickly, I just want to show you a couple of humorous things that I've come across. If you go out to Wikipedia and you do some research on data, and I've done that a long time ago, um, the slide or the, the comic that's on the left hand uh, side of the slide um, is what I actually have posted on Wikipedia. Uh, and it talks about the bringing together of different types of data for business purpose and for making sense of that data and being able to, able to make decisions from that data. So I'll share that, that comic with you again a little bit later here, but also on the right, why grandma, what big data you have, everybody's talking about big data. A couple other uh, comics real quickly, the one on the right is of particular interest to me. Let's solve the problem by using the big data that none of us have the slightest idea what to do with. Well, you know what, if we apply governance to that big data, we improve the understanding of that data, we get in the process of identifying what big data we're going to be using, um, then it, the chances are that we will be able to make decisions based on the big data. And it will go from more from being a um, subject that people are talking about but not understanding to, a, uh, to something that's well understood and well taken advantage in organizations. As we know, data is getting bigger and bigger as we speak. And sources of data are many and very varied, and they come at us from all sorts of speed. So, um, the question I have for you is um, has to do with the budgeting for big data. I'm finding a lot of organizations are uh, are budgeting for big data, but I'm not exactly sure what they're budgeting for. I'll talk to you a little bit about some of the things that you budget for when it comes to big data. How exactly are they spending their money? Well, big data has been around for several years. The definition continues to change. Organizations seem to be taking it seriously and addressing the things that they need to around data, uh, around big data. And here are what companies typically are budgeting for, scaling up and scaling out storage, development of non-production and production environments around their big data. They're, they're budgeting for staff and training on big data tools that are new to our environment, operational systems, you know, the purging and the archiving and the disaster recovery for big data. But organizations that are thinking about data governance don't necessarily put those three at the bottom of this list at the top of their priority list. Now, we're going to talk about big data governance and the governing of big data today, but I'm also going to spend a moment talking about big data metadata because there is such a thing. I don't want to just call it big metadata because it's really the metadata that's associated with your big data. And then also all of the rules associated with risk management for all the other data in our organization apply to big data as well. So I just wanted to share those with you. In fact, data governance has become such the rage that, and I think I've said this before, is that I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, a low group called the Pittsburgh Technology Council held an event called, I love it when you call me big data. <laughs> and they try to be risque, they attracted a heck of a lot of people, more people than they've ever attracted for an event. Um, and the thing that I had proposed to them was you may not be being, doing big data, but big data is doing you. Certainly we are being in, in engulfed by data coming from a lot of places in a lot of different ways, and we need to take advantage of that data in our organization. So let's start real quickly with a definition of what big data is. And there's different definitions depending on who you ask. The traditional definition about big data is that it's high volume data. It's high variety data coming from a lot of different sources and a lot of different formats. It's velocity, it's coming at us at great speed, great volumes of data are coming at us quickly and in different forms, and we need to understand how we can take advantage of that data for our organization. And that data, just like any other data in the organization, needs to be governed. And I'll talk more about that in a couple minutes here. Another definition of big data is it's terabytes and petabytes and even exabytes of data in all sorts of formats that are coming to us in a lot of different ways. And in a lot of organizations, we're we're looking at ways to uh, consider using that data to make decisions, um, but it's treated as a secondary or tertiary requirement, and the, the security of that information is being uh, treated as a secondary or tertiary requirement. All the big data is unstructured data, data that's coming that can be found in texts and emails and social media sites and machine-generated logs. So the question that I have for you, and if you would, would be kind enough to take a moment and maybe enter into 
either the Q&A or the chat session, you know, how is your organization defining big data? Or maybe even just share with the folks in the session, you know, are you even talking about big data in your organization? Are you talking about learning big data? Are you talking about something that you are calling big data governance? Is there a need to call something big data governance, or is it, in fact, just the governing of the data, uh, governing of the big data? Um, I had a webinar last year in the Real World Data Governance Series on big data. This is the only slide that I borrowed from that presentation. So um, all the stuff that I'm going to talk to you about here it is different than what I talked to you about before, but I thought this slide kind of hit it on the head when it was defining big data. Big data is a term applied to data assets whose size is beyond the ability of commonly used software tools to capture, manage, process data within a tolerable elapsed time. Well, the question really is, is it just the size that's the concern to us, or is it the format that that data is coming into us that that's a concern? You know, are the software tools that we have in our environment capable of being able to capture and manage and process that data, whether it's really large data or it's just data that's coming from us in different formats from different places? And if you look at this chart here, if you look at this pie chart, you'll see that, that the majority of people understand that, that big data is a legitimate problem that's stemming from the growth of this unstructured data that's coming at us from all directions. And some people think that it's a meaningless catchphrase. Other people think that it's a way to talk about Hadoop. Other people think it's a data warehouse. Other people don't know. The fact is that big data is becoming more commonplace in organizations. People are using that term. The fact is that it's just being defined differently in different organizations. So if you can take a moment, share with us what your definition of big data is. That's something that I'll share back with folks in the email that Shannon uh, mentioned that we send out you know, within a couple of days of after the, the time the webinar is over. Let's all share a definition of data governance. I talk about this a lot. Data governance to me is the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data, whether that's big data or that's small data. Data, and data of all shapes and sizes if we want to get value out of that data. We need to execute and enforce authority over that data. We need to make good decisions about that data. Other definitions of data governance are that it's the orchestration and the harmonization of people and process and data. And that's all well and good if you expect that you're going to be able to get people into a room and get them all to put their arms around each other's shoulders and sway back and forth and solve problems. The fact is we need to execute and enforce authority. You know, other people think data governance is uh, the formality of decision rights. And you know what? You need to have decision rights associated with your big data, the way you have associated with your, your small data, your metadata, your master data, your reference data, all of your data needs to be governed. So we want to make certain that we execute and enforce authority that we bring together people processing data and that we formalize our decision rights associated with that data whether it's big data or small data in our organization. So you believe, like I believe, that the definition of big governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data. Well, what data is that execution and enforcement of authority over? It's over all of those definitions that I had just shared. It's the high volume data. It's the tera, peta, and exabytes of data in different formats. It's structured data. It's unstructured data. So if we believe that we need to execute and enforce authority over the management of data, then we certainly need to make certain that we extend that governance of data into our big data. Again, the question becomes, do we use a term called big data governance? describe this governance of big data, or do we just call it governance of big data? Do we need to have a separate program for big data, or do we have to have separate roles and responsibilities? Let's investigate that further here in the balance of the webinar. So one of the things that, that big data governance needs to be concerned with, well, there are four primary principles that I talk about all the time in organizations. We talk about those principles as being that we need to manage data as an asset. We need to formalize accountability for that data, no matter what size it is or where it's coming from. Um, we need to follow the rules that are associated with that data. And we want to be consistent in the way that we apply governance to that data. So about this in terms of big data, we need to apply these things the same way to big data as we do to any other type of data in our organization. We need to manage it as an asset. We need to have people accountable for it. We need to follow the rules. We need to specifically manage the definition of the big data. We need to manage the production of the big data. We need to manage the usage of the big data. It's just a type of data in our organization. Yes, we might have issues that pertain specifically to that data, but we want to make certain that we're managing 
predicting the definition of our big data, managing the production, and managing the usage of the big data. Um, so certainly data is an asset, and big data is another type of data in our organization. We need to have people responsible for it. We need to follow the rules and all of those types of things. I knew I was going to mention metadata in here as well. Well, the fact is that I saw somebody talking about big metadata, and I said, that, that, that does, does not sound right to me. We really talk about big data in relationship to the metadata. And the reason why I showed that cartoon or that comic strip here on, the, on this slide again is, if you look at that closely, the, the individual that's talking to the guy with the uh, the big guy there says, says, your recent Amazon purchases, tweet score, and location history make you 23.5% welcome here. Look at those three different sources of data. Look at the Amazon purchases. Well, where are you going to get that data from? The, the tweet score, where does that come from? The location history. I know this is just an example that goes along with that cartoon right there. But think of it. If we can get data from a whole lot of different sources, we need to have information about that data. We need to have, know where it came from. We need to know the format. We need to know the way that it's defined. Now, the data in the past was always limited to the things that we talk about, the names, the definitions, and the labels associated with the data. Well, now, if we're talking about metadata associated with big data, then we need to take into consideration that these, these sources of data are going to be varied across the, across the place that we can pull the data from and across the organization. So metadata as a term continues to evolve. You know, really, we talked about it in terms of data as a, uh, from big data management aspect to becoming a BI and data warehouse asset to a, a data governance asset. We hear about uh, metadata in the news all the time as being a privacy and a confidentiality asset, confidentiality asset. Well, now metadata has certainly become a big asset since we need to know information about where does it come from, how is it defined, when does it get updated, what's the confidence that we can have in that data. All of those things are metadata associated with big data in our organization comes to putting together data governance strategies for our organization, um, from the ones that I've had the, uh, the pleasure and the honor of working with, you know, we want to govern structured data and unstructured data and content and records and logs and data. They don't set up separate data governance programs specifically for structured data versus unstructured data. Granted, a lot of organizations will start with the governance of structured data and then start to focus on structured data and content data. But the question becomes, can we utilize the same roles and responsibilities? Can we govern processes to just, just the same way that we govern processes associated with normal data governance for the other types of data within the organization? Or do we have to develop a separate program that focuses on big data governance? And you'll find that in this session, my suggestion is, no, we really don't need to set up something that by itself stands alone as big data governance. Governance. We can take advantage of the roles and responsibilities that we've defined. Some of the tools that I'll share with you in a couple of minutes um, that will help us to understand who does what with the data across the organization. We need to include the big data in that in that data that we are inventorying and that we're looking for who's accountable for that information. And we need to help formalize that accountability, whether it's structured data, it's unstructured data, it's content, record, whatever it is, we can use the same program to manage the different types of data within our organization. Well, the same thing holds true for different subject matters of data. I've worked with organizations that have set up customer data governance programs or supplier data governance programs. And the fact is when they're setting up their programs specifically for that subset of data, they want to do it in such a way that it's extendable in other types of data within the organization. So we want to make certain that if we define a data governance program for our organization, that we have room to be able to grow within our program to identify what roles and responsibilities are that are associated with the governance of big data within our organization as well. I don't see organizations setting up data governance programs for customer and then setting up another data governance program for supplier and another one for product. In fact, I see organizations that from a subject matter and from a data domain perspective to utilize the same structures that, that they've defined for their governance program in general to focus on these different uh, domains and subject areas of data within their organization. So uh, to answer the bottom question on the slide, um, typically find that one data governance program is really all that's necessary. Uh, and it's difficult enough to get one program off the ground, let alone 
I'm trying to put a program in place for different types of data, for different subject matters, for different structures of data coming into the organization. Again, my suggestion is that we want to define our governance program in one way that's extensible and expandable into other areas of the organization. If one of those areas is the introduction of big data into our environment, then we want to make certain that we can extend our data governance program into those areas. So do we or will we govern big data in, in ways that are different than other data? And I look at that from an accountability perspective, you know, who's responsibility for this data, from a process perspective, from a rules perspective, an inventory and a decision-making perspective. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you quickly here a couple different graphics that I use um, all the time with organizations that help me to understand who's accountable for data in the organization. How do we apply governance to specific processes? What rule do we need to educate people uh, across the organization? How are we going to inventory our data, including our big data? And how are we going to utilize that data from a decision-making perspective? Do we need to create a different construct for making decisions around big data than we do for data? And again, I venture to say that, that I don't really think that it's necessary. So from an accountability perspective, this is a model that I use to define different roles and responsibilities around governance in the organization. People's first response to this graphic is that it seems pretty bureaucratic. There's a lot of different levels. That's why I incorporate these things on the outside of the diagram that say, and some of these things already exist or can be leveraged within the organization. You know, the fact is most organizations look at things this way. They look at things from an operational perspective. They look at things from a tactical perspective, strategic, and executive perspective. And so it shouldn't be surprising to you that the roles and responsibilities that I typically talk about in terms of data governance into those categories. We've got operational data steward roles. We've got tactical data steward roles. We've got a strategic level of data governance council. And then we've got a steering committee at the executive level. And in fact, the webinar, I think it's in, the, the, in February of 2015, is going to focus on this operating model of roles and responsibilities and go into the details for each of those. So we incorporate big data into our environment. Does that mean that we need to create additional layers? We're sharing that data with people at an operational level, at a tactical, at a strategic level. We need to have all of those same levels of responsibility and accountability for the data, whether it's big data, small data, metadata, master data, reference data, whatever type of data it is in the organization, doesn't it make sense to define sets of roles and responsibilities one time and then reuse those? Now, we don't need to be afraid to alter those in whatever way they need to be altered to address big data into the other types of data that we're governing. Um, but perhaps we can use the operating model that we've defined for our governance program or the role and responsibilities that you've defined for your program in your organization. We also need somebody who has the responsibility for data governance, whether it's any size of data in your organization. We also need to understand that we need to take into consideration information technology and project management and regulatory and compliance when it comes to governing data. So again, I would venture to say that if we're gonna govern big data, so we don't have to create a big data governance program to do that. We can take advantage of all of these different levels of rules and responsibilities that I've laid out here. And again, if you're interested in more information about that, please attend the webinar uh, coming up in February. From a process perspective, we can do the same thing. We can take and outline those activities that we need to govern for our organization. And we can create these RACI or these RASCI charts of the different steps of the processes the different roles associated with our program, and who does what in those steps of the process. So rather than this, this process stating resolve or research information quality issues, perhaps consider that it may be a, a process for bringing big data into the organization from a variety of sources. For buying an analytical model that we're going to plug that data into that's going to help us to analyze and to make sense of that data. All these processes all, that are involved in all, all the different aspects of, uh, of managing the data and taking advantage of the data and all the operational processes within our organization, any of those processes that are associated with big data, they need to be governed as well. So from a process perspective, do we need to redefine the program? Well, not exactly. What we need to do is 
to find the processes, outline the steps of the processes, and again, the roles and responsibilities of the program and bring the together to make certain that we've got the right people involved at the right time for the right reason, govern the data through the big data, uh, big processes that we have in our organization. Data governance and governing big data different from a, from a rules perspective, or is big data governance different from any other type of governance from a rules perspective? Well, I would again venture to say that it's important that we understand the rules associated with big data. We understand the protection rules. We understand the classification rules as far as what's highly confidential, what's confidential, what's sensitive, what's public data. We need to be certain that we document the rules associated with the data the same way that we document it for any of the different types of data that we use in our organization. So this common data matrix, an older version of the common data matrix, actually has this spot right here that I spelled out. It says we need to make certain that for each subject area of data, we're collecting the rules associated with that data, and we're distributing that to all of the people in the organization that are going to have their hands on the big data. We want that those rules are well documented. So again, the, from a rules perspective, governing big data is just like governing any other type of data within the organization. If you feel differently, I'd be interested in hearing uh, hearing from you um, what your thoughts are. From an inventory perspective, I've shared the common data matrix before. Um, this is a way of being able to, to identify by subject area what are the different types of data that we have in our organization and who in the organization uses that data. We need to identify for each of the subject areas what are the systems that that data resides in and who in the different parts of the organization make use of that data. So as we're going to inventory the data, we need to add the fact that big data is another place that we can find customer data, that we find finance data, that we can find employer, supplier, or vendor data. So it's sense from, from an organizational perspective to know where all of our data is located and to identify who has accountability for that data, whether it's informal accountability or formalized accountability for the management of that data, which comes into play when we talk about putting our governance program into place. Is a big data different from our governance of other data from a decision-making perspective? Again, going back to the operating model of roles and responsibilities that I've shared, you know, we know that we've got operational people, we know we've got tactical and we've got strategic people, one of the things that I don't talk about a lot in this operating model of roles and responsibilities is this escalation path and approval path. In organizations, they want to push as much of the decision making associated with the data as far down into the data and into the organization as possible. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to this diagram, and in fact, the layers of the, um, the pyramid diagram that you see there kind of indicate to you um, what's the percentage of the decisions that organizations want to make at that level? In organizations, they talk about pushing the decisions down to the business unit, to the operational level. But when those issues start to cross over business units, then they escalate it up to the tactical layer. If the decision cannot be made at the tactical layer, we escalate it again up to the strategic layer to the data governance council. That's why you see no space in that tower that's sticking out of the operating model is that we don't escalate issues up to senior management. So for uh, at least that's why we have a council of representatives of senior le our senior leadership team across the organization to be in that position to be able to make decisions that do get escalated to the strategic level. So again, I would say that if we have a clearly defined decision path or a decision process or an escalation process designed for our governance program, would say that we should consider using that same process, in that same escalation path for governance of big data as we would for the governance of any size data within our organization. Uh, let's see, so let's talk about different ways to govern big data within our organization. I have a time about governing data from a definition perspective, from a perspective, and from a usage perspective. Well, if governing our other data from those same three perspectives, then why don't we also consider governing our big data from those uh, from those perspectives as well? So, governing the definition of big data, somebody has to have the responsibility for identifying what big data is available to us. Um, the research to identify what the potential sources are, 
they have those sources, they need to identify out of that big data what data is going to be useful to the organization. What structure that we're going to need within our organization to be able to handle that data as it comes in from the outside. And how is that big data defined? Are those places that we're pulling big data from, are they providing us a definition or do we need to develop that definition um, within, the, within our organization? You know, all the things associated with governing the definition of data apply to big data as well, including the definition of the format of the data, who has accountability for defining the big data, and we need to store the definition of the big data somewhere, whether it's our metadata solution in a business glossary, wherever we're providing metadata information about the data to people within our organization. So say one of the ways to govern big data is to govern the definition of the big data. And you know what? It's not going to govern itself. We need certain that we've got individuals in our organization that have clearly defined accountability around governing all of these aspects of the definition of big data. To govern big data is to govern the production of the data, uh, the production of the big data. How is the big data being produced? Where is this coming from? What's the quality of the data? And if we have accountability for assigned to people, or do we have accountability formalized with people for producing that big data? And where are we going to store the information about how that big data was produced? Again, that's another way for us to govern big data. We can govern the definition, we can govern the production, and by means we need to govern the usage of that big data. So we need to recognize who's going to use that big data. What rules do we need to be able to educate them on associated with that big data as to how it can be used, you know, what the definition of that data is, where it came from, you know, what are some of the applications of that big data to our organization. We need to govern the usage of big data the same way that we need to govern the usage of any data in our organization. And in fact, a recent client of mine, the sole focus of their governance program was on protecting the data. Their government agency. Well, the fact is, when they start to pull big data in, that data is just going to plug right into their governance program for protecting data. They don't need to redefine their governance program. They may find additional tools to help them to govern the big data because of the, the different things that we talked about, the volume, the velocity, and the variety of that data. But we need to govern the usage of the data. So the same ways that we govern definition, production, and usage of other types of data in our organization, we need to govern the usage of big data as well. So that, we might as well look and say, well, what does the definition of to govern something mean? So what does it really mean to govern big data? What's the best place to go but the dictionary where we talk about what is the definition of what it means to govern something, to make and administer public policy and affairs, to exercise sovereign authority, to control the speed, to relate, to control actions or behaviors. Well, if we're going to do all of those things are over big data, that's what it means to govern big data. We're going to keep under control. We're going to exercise the deciding or de determining influence. All these things, those are, the, again, the, the, the dictionary definition of what it means to govern something. All things apply to the governance of big data, the governance of small data, matter, metadata, master data, whatever to metadata we have in our organization. So one more thing that, we'll, that I want to talk about here when it comes to connecting data governance and big data is those four core principles that I mentioned earlier. You know, we can get our management to understand and to agree that data must be governed as a valued and strategic asset and that we have to have clearly defined accountability for data in general in our organization and that we must follow the rules and that we must be consistent in the ways that we govern data across the organization. Well, then start to introduce big data to your environment, you know, the same four core principles apply. We need to make certain that we're managing it as an asset, that we have ability, that we govern it to the rules, and that we're consistent in our approach to governing data within an organization. So here are some questions around the vitality of big data governance. You know, do we require a separate discipline called big data governance? And you can tell what my, uh, what my answer to that question is. I really think that we can leverage existing governance to handle big data in our organization. How would big data differ from the other? Other type of governance, we we'll talked about it. The accountability would be the same. The decision making would be the same. You know, the same rules, rules and rules apply. Should we just stop using the term big data governance and call it data governance, or can we use the the fact that organizations are starting to embrace big data 
in a way that will help us to tell the need for data governance in our organization. So let's take a look at this. Um, do we require a separate discipline called big data governance? Well, in my opinion, the answer is no, it's not necessary. But what's your opinion? Do you think that we need to have a separate, separate discipline for big data governance than we have for, for, for data governance in general? Uh, so do we really require it? We're having a hard enough time in a lot of organizations selling the need and justifying the existence of role resources and, and time and money being spent towards data governance. Think about what the action of people are going to be when we say that we need a separate governance program to, to govern big data from the other types of data in the organization. Now, how would it differ? Would our, how would big data governance differ from any other type of data governance? Would it, it be different in best practices, in the roles, in the action plan, or the communication plan? Well, best practices that I typically see being adopted by organizations are that you know, senior management support, sponsor, and understand the activities of governance. Well, those best practices would that same best practice would apply to big data as it would any other type of data. Um, the second one is that somebody has to have the responsibility for governance within the organization. That the the roles are the roles and responsibilities are clearly defined. Well, if we're going to govern big data, we need to have those same types of best practices. And in fact, we can incorporate the analysis and the assessment of big data governance or big data with our assessment of other types of of data within the organization. You know, we, I mentioned earlier the different types of roles that are typically associated with a governance program. Well, again, you're going to try to redefine your roles and responsibilities specifically around big data, or we're going to look at that as a duplication of effort. So again, perhaps what we want to do is we want to take our data governance initiative and we want to embrace the fact that big data, that data at high volume, at high speed, of high varieties of formats are coming out and we want to make certain that the roles and responsibilities that we define for our program are are there to be able to handle and enable the governance of the other uh, of the other types of data within the organization. So, so roles um, would the same roles apply? Well, we need to have an executive, strategic, tactical, operational, and support roles. The same thing would you could answer that question for? Would the same rules apply? Are you LES? Do we protect the big data the way that we protect other data? Do we need to classify that data? Do we have compliance rules associated with that data and business rules associated with the big data? The question is, if we're going to govern any other type of data, do we need to know protection, classification, compliance, business rules associated with the, the data the same way that we have it associated with other places in the organization? Um, the really is, should we stop using the term big data governance? And I hear that term and I see it in print and I see it in uh, in presentations all the time. I don't typically raise the question to the person that, that's, uh, that's holding that session or writing that article, but I, what I want to know from them is, is there really such a thing as big data governance or is it just the governance of big data? So the question here is, is big data even a thing? Just talk about it in terms of data governance of big data instead. So is big data to sell the need for governance in our organization? Well, the answer to that question is potentially yes, if your organization is already embracing big data. If your company hasn't embraced big data and you think that you see it on the, in the future, you know, you may not be able to use big data to sell the need for governance if you haven't embraced data governance yet. But things that you may want to do is at least open the door for the fact that as we're putting our governance program in place, we're making certain that allowing for the fact that there's going to be this high volume, high velocity, high variety data coming at us. We need to stress the need to execute and enforce authority, and we need to stress the need to formalize accountability for management of that data across the organization. So governance is governance to make certain that we execute and enforce authority and formalize accountability, we can use some of the same tools that I showed you earlier, the common data matrix, the pyramid model of roles and responsibilities around governance in our organization. Some additional considerations for the governance of big data. Well, we need to have people that are accountable for identifying and vetting and approving the data requirements when it comes to what big data is going to be useful to us, how are we using how are we going to apply it across the organization? That's not going to govern itself. We need to have a clearly defined role that has the responsibility for doing those things. We need a role associated with assessing the quality of the big data that's coming into our organization. We need a role associated 
associated with uh, accountability, associated with accessing the data or getting access to the big data in our organization. We need the ability for managing and supporting the infrastructure within the organization that we need to add and we're going to need to enhance in order for us to be able to, um, to maintain and to use the, the, the big data effectively within our organization. We need accountability for managing stakeholder expectations. Somebody needs to communicate with the, uh, the stakeholders, help them to understand what's available, what's possible, and, uh, and help to manage, again, their expectations as to what they expect to be able to get out of the big data efforts that are taking place in our organizations. In my research, I came across IBM's five ways to take advantage of big data. It's not surprising that the very two, the, ver the first two items on the list are build a corporate culture that's savvy around data and savvy around big data. And that people to understand that, that those four core principles that I mentioned a couple times earlier need to apply to any type of data in our organization to make sure that we manage that data properly. Their bullet of the five ways to take advantage of big data is that security and privacy and governance are requirement. So just me saying that we need to apply governance to our big data, it's everybody. It's the IBMs, all the other large consulting companies and small consulting companies say that we embrace data governance. We need to make certain that we're securing that data, we're holding data private, that we're governing that data as well within our organization. And there, they actually, the article that I found was on Forbes.com magazine, uh, and you can you can find it. It goes into more detail as to these five ways to take advantage of big data. So companies also should consider the following things when it comes to governing big data in the organization. All of the things that I just shared with you on the previous slide, those things are going to run in parallel with each other. We certain that we have the resources that we don't uh, not govern one of those aspects that I just spoke about, that we can govern things in parallel to each other. We can make certain that we get the right people involved at the right time again, to make certain that we're going out and we're assessing the, the, the big data opportunities we have in our organization. We govern the selection of the internal and the external data that we're going to integrate into our organization. We need to govern the selection of the models we're going to use and the tools that support the business goals in our organization as we start to embrace the idea of big data and as we start to put that data into models that we can use to make um, make decisions within our organization. We need the capabilities of the organization to exploit this new resource of data that we have, this new big, big data resource within our organization. The thing is the governing of parallel issues, the thing of the, the selection of which data is going to be associated with our big data effort, the analytical models, the exploiting of this, all of this needs to be governed by somebody. Does it be somebody who's separate from the rest of the governance initiative? Well, it may be from a project leader perspective. You have somebody that who is, is managing the data projects within our organization. We want to be certain that all of these decisions that were made, we're making association with you know, all these different issues, the internal, external data, the analytical models, and the, uh, and the expectations and the, the potential. We need to make certain that somebody has the responsibility for making those aspects of the the project. This is the best quote that I've seen out there about data about big data and data governance. It says that the payoff from being the data and advanced analytics management revolution is no longer in doubt. I won't read the rest of the quote, but you'll see that that was quoted in October of 2012. So that was two years ago already, two years plus that the um, that this statement was made. And the fact is. Organizations are still just starting to embrace big data. They're certainly starting to embrace advanced analytics, and they're recognizing that in order to manage to advance analytics, we need to have high quality data. We need to have accountability for the data. The fact is, the payoff from joining the big data and the analytics revolution is no longer in doubt to some, but some organizations are still a little bit behind um, in kind of catching up to the fact that there's a lot of data out there that we can take advantage of that can help advance our organization. The fact is that if we don't take advantage of the big data, and we govern that big data the same way that we govern other data in our organization, um, the fact that our competition is going to leave us in the dust because they are going to start looking at the importance of these things uh, in our organizations. So the last things that I want to talk about before we take a, a couple questions 
are um, the applications of big data. And what I did was I pulled off several different industries to share with you, because if big data is still more conceptual to you, uh, to kind of make it a little bit more real for you. I mean, by the, by the way, this is real world data governance, so let's talk about real world uh, big data as well. So the applications of big data in healthcare, organizations are aggregating years of research and development data into medical databases, they're digitizing their patient records, they're bringing together all the healthcare knowledge into databases and helping them to make, make better medical decisions. They're managing data from clinical trials to information on patients, they're collecting and analyzing information from multiple sources. These are some of the applications of big data in the healthcare industry. In the retail industry, here are several more. There's a growing cross-channel data volumes, increasing investments in technologies, in retail technologies, you know, solving the behavior puzzle, understanding what customer behavior is, increasing our sale, our sales of our organization by understanding customer behaviors and, and and changing the ways that we set up our stores and set up our websites and we set up our relationships from one product to the next. You know, we need to be able to assess the customer behavior information. Improving personalization, segmenting the most valuable customers. These are other ways that uh, that retail industry are embracing big data within their organization. And the last one is the applications of big data in education. Improving the feedback and the application processes to higher education. Personalization of course study and helping to pull information from universities across the country and across the globe to help individuals to understand you know where they can go with the different courses of study that they're taking within their organization we can improve efficiency by saving time and effort to realize goals for our students for our faculty for our programs they're tracking and understanding the patterns of learners that's another big use of big data within the education space. And then understanding more about the learning process by bringing in all these different aspects of data and helping us to be able to analyze that data so that we can, again, understand better the learning process and what's going to be effective for people. Um, so go up here real quickly and then take a couple questions. Um, this, we talked about defining big data. We talked about defining data guns. We talked about um, big data governance, and if it is such a thing, or are we truly just applying governance the same way that we apply it to other data, to the big data of our organization? We talked about ways to govern big data through the definition, production, and usage of data. We talked about using the big data to make a connection for the IT and the business people and determining the vitality of something that we might call big data governance within our organization. I also shared with you as a last item some of the considerations for big data governance. And so I went through a lot of this stuff real quickly with you. I hope that it was was helpful to you. Um, and then it said we're sharing the slides with folks. Uh, and I'd be welcome to, to take any questions that you have. Just quickly before we start that, the upcoming webinars, we'll talk about agile and data governance in January, talk about data governance roles and responsibilities in February, and data governance best practices and best practice criteria in March. So thank you for your participation today. Shannon. Do we have any questions? We have questions coming in, and if you have any additional questions, go ahead and submit them in the right-hand corner in the Q&A section. And, of course, one of the most common questions that we get from everybody is asking if they get a copy of the slides. And I will be sending a follow-up at the end of day Monday with links to the slides, links to the recording of the session, and anything else requested throughout the webinar, uh, including all the great resources that Bob has mentioned throughout. Um, so, Bob, there was a question about slide uh, 12. Do you know what the demographic of the folks that answered the poll was? Do you have an idea? Um, you don't really know, but if you go to the allanalytics.com, that should be able to answer that question for you. Um, most polls, they do provide that information, but I, I don't have that handy and I don't want to make it up for you. But it, it's really revealing, that study. Um, if the, the majority of the people, even if it's a slight majority, uh, will recognize that there's a growth of unstructured data in our organization. You know, the people that say that's another way to say Hadoop and the, the meaningless catchphrase, you know, that's a limited number of people. But you know, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have the answer, but I will be glad to get that information for you and then provide it back to you in the answers after the webinar uh, is done. You, as always, and what the next question is: What is your perspective of the gaps between data governance and 
interesting governance. Well, that's interesting because there's a lot of organizations that are using the term information governance, and in fact, they're using it again in different ways. There's some organizations, in fact, there's a client that I worked for that, that coded information governance because they attempted data governance several times and it hadn't worked for them, so they, they figured they needed to call it something else, so they called it information governance. We all know that data and information are the same thing. No, they're not. The data plus the context for the data becomes the information. You know, other ways that organizations are using information governance is that they're using it to include not only data governance, but product governance and technology governance. I've had the pleasure of working with several organizations that have called their program information governance as the umbrella term used to embrace, you know, not only data governance, but the, again, the, the, the technology governance and the process governance. I've seen some government, government organizations that use the term information governance applied to the data governance, the policy governance, and the technology governance. So there's, there's different umbrellas or the, the term information governance is being used different ways in different organizations. I would say that if we're going to look at the, the gap between data governance and information governance, information governance is going to include more than just the specific data itself. It's going to include the metadata. It's going to include the processes associated with the data. It's going to include the, the acquisition of new technologies within the organization. So, so that gap is the organizations that are calling it information governance either using it just to replace the term data with information, but that there's differences between the two, or they're using it to embrace a, a wider area of the organization for governance. And the most often times I see it as being data governance, product governance, and technology governance. Probably speak on for <laughs> at least a whole webinar, if not a whole conference. <laughs> the yeah, that question not, so I appreciate that question. Thank you very much. Much. So, uh, uh, it's more actually a, a request for your thoughts on this on the following statement. It seems to me we need a different approach to metadata management for big data, Hadoop specifically, because it is a schema on read rather than a schema on write. What are your thoughts on that? Well, um, I say that we need to have an approach on metadata. If the metadata that is specifically being captured about big data increases our requirements or it expands our requirements to to manage the metadata that specifically goes along with Hadoop, and I'm not a Hadoop specialist, so I don't I don't typically talk to things that I don't have a lot of knowledge in. Um, but the fact is that if we're doing metadata management for big data, we need to identify what information about that data is going to be necessary. For the organization, you know, to need a different approach to metadata. I would think that you would do this: take the same steps to identify the metadata associated with your big data and the metadata that's associated with your data warehouse or your master data management solution. Certainly, there would be additional types of metadata when we're talking about big data. Again, things that I talked about earlier in the webinar, where we need to know where that data came from and what's the format of that data and how that data can be used and can't be used, and the definition of that data. You know, if we're going to identify our requirements for master data or, or metadata requirements for master data or for data warehouse. You know, we have, may have some steps that we do to identify what those requirements are. I would say that we don't really need a different approach to metadata management for big data. We follow the same steps, understanding that some of the results that we um, that we receive from doing that assessment of the requirements may be different for big data than they are for the other types of data I mentioned. What can you hear what federal agencies you have found that have good mature DG programs and ones that have a vibrant DG implementation process? I certainly talked to one in, in particular from recent uh, recent memory. Actually, I could talk to another as well. So there's a Department of Health and Welfare within a, a state in the U.S. That, that I may have mentioned before, but their data governance program was entirely focused on the protection of data. What they did was they set up a, a, a project to build all the tools and to get all the rules associated with the protection of the data um, as a project first, and got those things ready before they started to embrace the stewardship aspect of data governance. 
Once they had the rules in place associated with the specific data to where the, the rules applied, they were able to then go out to all of the folks that were, were potential uh, users of that data and educate them on how that data can be used, how data can't be used. So that's one example, uh, a good example of, of a, well, that's not a federal agency, that's more of a state agency. Um, I talked to the folks at the Department of Education uh, the, for the U.S. government. Um, and they don't necessarily have a vibrant data governance implementation project underway, but they do have folks that are looking at that at this point. So I mean, been the CIA, I helped to work with them to put together a strategy around data governance. But um, again, the information that they've shared with me since my engagement ended has been limited. But I know that they have a pretty vibrant and mature data governance program. The Department of Defense has a pretty large um, data governance program. In fact, governments from other other countries. I was going to say other worlds, other things about governance, uh, government from other worlds. But, but you know, we had at one of the data diversity events recently, we had the speaker from the uh, the British Army Department of Manning, uh, the Army, uh, about the the in depth detail of their um, their flourishing data governance program. So there's examples out there. Do a search on the internet of federal agencies and data governance programs. Attend the Enterprise Data World Conference or attend the Data Governance Winter or Finance or DGIQ Conference, and you hear case studies from federal agencies, state agencies, local agencies, how their programs have matured and how they've added value to their organizations over time. So that's a suggestion to you for how we can learn more about how federal agencies have found, um, have taken advantage of their governance programs. The biggest question you get from your clients regarding um, implementing big data? The biggest question is, well, what is it exactly? And that's how we started the webinar that way is to, that it, big data as it was originally defined was those three Vs the high volume, the high velocity, the high uh, variety of formats of data. Um, but the high volume that that was the focus of the original conversations around big data. Uh, Climb Mine, an oil and gas company, built sensors onto their oil um, rigs that were out in the Gulf of Mexico, and those were constantly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sending data back to their organization. They wanted to know if that high volume data was big data. And for their intents and purposes, it was. But at this point in time, just even going back to that, that silly cartoon that I shared earlier about location data, about tweet, Twitter and social media data, uh, about purchase record data, um, people want to know what big data is. And that's why I asked the question at the beginning, what does big data mean specifically to your organization? Because even though there are definitions of big data out there, depending on who you ask. So that's the number one question that I get. And then the second question is, do we need to have big data governance or can we just apply our governance framework to our big data? And I think I answered that in this webinar here. I think that you can just apply governance to your existing, uh, your existing levels of governance to big data as well as other types of data. Definitely. And I have seen trends of, you know, just the term big data even going away just because it's data, there's just a lot of data out there it, every day, it, anywhere, and we just need to manage it. And that's well, the way it goes. I'll let you wrap things up in a second, but it's funny you say that because in the webinar that I did last year on big data, I talked about the term small data. And I think that potentially the term big data is going to go away. You know, organizations may focus on small data, small, small, finely tuned, refined data sets with high levels of metadata that are used to make critical corporate decisions. So it, it, big data could be replaced with small data. So uh, I believe there's some truth in what you said, that big data could go away at some point in time. Thank you, as always, Bob, for this great presentation. And as always, thanks to our attendees for being engaged in everything we do and with, for your great questions. Again, I will send out a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides, the recording of the session, and the additional resources Bob had mentioned throughout the webinar. So having what, everyone has a great day and happy holidays. Bob? Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, Shannon, and, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.